Before judging a matter, weigh it first to be sure that what you heard is the truth. And if it happens to be the truth, be careful to judge. Always remember, someone else's reputation could be at stake. Hi everyone and welcome back to Pure Words with OD, a platform where we discuss Bible principles and morals. Today's message is on slandering and gossiping. A person who is wise with what they say will be loved by many. But a person who goes about slandering other people, not only will they lose their respect, they will be hated by everyone. Slandering and gossiping are a very serious offense and can be very destructive. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 6.16 that there are six things the Lord hates, one of which is someone who spreads rumors. You may think it's just a chat and that you are not hurting anyone, but you are painting a picture in the minds of those who are sharing in the gossip. Slandering is when someone says something that is untrue about someone else that results in damaging their reputation. In Proverbs 101 verse 5, the Lord said, Whoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. So it's a very serious offense and must be taken seriously. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for necessary edification. That is, if your word is not going to lift someone else up, if it's going to detract from their character, then don't say it. Most of us are familiar with the say, what goes around comes around. That is, the way we treat others, be it in our words, act or actions, we also will be treated. Jesus said in Luke 6.31, Treat others the same way you want them to treat you, and that includes what we say about others. Proverbs 18.20 says, By the fruit of a man's mouth, his belly shall be filled. Every word that a person speaks out of their mouth, they will have to eat back. So if a person speaks good word, good word will return to them. In the same vein, if they speak evil, evil will return to them. There was a young man who went about slandering other people's parents. He would say without any proof, that they were witches and wizards, thereby damaging their reputation in the community. Years later, the young man moved to a new community. He got married and started raising his own family. He complained to me one day. He said he was being slandered. He said those in his new community were calling him bad name. I said, how? He said they were referring to him as wizard. And as a result, people were becoming skeptical to associate with him. When he said that, I immediately flashed back to when he did the same thing to other people. Galatians 6, 7 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, thus shall he reap. Someone who cooks up false news that will damage someone else's reputation, it shall return upon them, and they will not understand why it is happening to them. Slandering and gossiping has destroyed homes. It has destroyed families. Slandering and gossiping has destroyed good friendships, it has destroyed relationships. Slandering and gossiping has destroyed great nations, it has overthrown estates. It's for this reason, liars and slanderers are an abomination to God. Are you judging a person because they are going through challenging times in their lives? People go through challenging times, not necessarily because they have done something wrong, nor because they deserve it. Of course, some people may have sown bad seeds and are reaping it, but it's not always the case. At times, God allows people to go through trials and challenges so as to prepare them for a greater task or blessing. When we are quick to judge such people and to spread rumors about their predicament, we may be speaking against God ignorantly, and that can be very sensitive. We saw in the book of Job that Job went through great trials and challenges because God was preparing him for a greater blessing. Job's friends did not understand this, so they spoke negative things about Job, thereby ignorantly speaking against God. And as a result, they were snared by their words. Let's not be excited over other people's predicaments. Let's not celebrate other people's failure and setbacks. Let's not be carriers of bad news. Before judging a matter, weigh it first to be sure that what you heard is the truth. And if it happens to be the truth, be careful to judge. Always remember, someone else's reputation could be at stake. And for that person who is listening to gossip, Jesus said in Mark 4.24, Take heed what you hear, for whatever measure you judge, it shall be measured to you. What Jesus is saying is that we should be careful what we hear. There is a difference between hearing and listening. Someone may come to you with a story. You listen to them. But at the end of the story, 
it is your duty to decide on what you choose to hear from that story. Whatever it is that you hear from the story will paint a picture in your mind. So if you hear something positive from that story, it will paint a positive picture in your mind. And if you hear something negative, it will paint a negative picture in your mind. Because what we hear is what we see, and words paint pictures in our minds. Two strangers were sitting outside of a restaurant. One of them is someone I used to know. While they were sitting there, a nice car pulled into the parking lot. The stranger then said to the one I used to know that he has a similar car. And he began to tell the one I used to know about the history and the mechanism of the car. After the brief conversation, they went their separate ways. The one I used to know then said to me that the stranger was trying to impress him by telling him that he has a nice car. You see, the one I used to know felt the stranger was trying to impress him because that was what he heard from the conversation. And what he heard from the conversation painted a picture about the stranger in his mind. On the other hand, I saw a man who has a nice car and loves to talk about it. The difference between my judgment and the judgment of the one I used to know was how we heard. And what we heard painted pictures in our minds respectively. And we judged based on the pictures that were painted in our minds. That's why Jesus is saying, be careful what you hear. For whatever measure you judge others, you also will be judged. Gossip and slander is like a spark. If you blow breeze on it, it will grow into a fire. But if you spit on it, it will quench. Both the spit and the breeze comes out of the same mouth. It now depends on what you do with it. You can either choose to make it into a fire or quench it. We can control the content of what goes into our minds by what we accept or reject. This means whatever is not edifying, whatever will not lift someone else up, instead will detract from their character. We have the duty to reject it. Because if we allow it, it will be painting a negative picture in our minds, which is harmful not only to the person that is being gossiped about, but also to you who is receiving the negative message. So if someone comes to you with gossip or to slander someone else, do not entertain it. Instead, be an advocate of peace to both parties. If you're a victim of slander and gossip, I have good news for you. Jesus said in Luke 8:17, There is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed. Nothing concealed that will not be brought out to the open. So maintain your silence and trust in the Lord. The truth will speak for you. It's only a matter of time. Also, if you have offended someone through slander or gossip, repent and ask the Lord for mercy. And if possible, ask the person whom you have slandered to forgive you. The Bible says in Isaiah 1.18, Though your sins may be as scarlet, they shall be whiter than snow. Do not be ashamed or proud to ask for mercy. But in the same vein, do not accept just anyone that comes up to say that you have offended them. For example, if you point out a fault in a person that is evidently true and you did it at the right time and for the right reasons and the person feels offended by you, in such case, you do not owe them an apology. If you must apologize, let it be only to those whom you have offended. Father Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bring healing to those who are victims of slander and gossip. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will turn the heart of those who indulge in slandering and gossiping, that they may come to know you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks again, guys, for watching Pure Words with Odi. I hope that this message blesses someone. I'll see you on our next video. God bless you. Bye-bye.